Hey, welcome to the Rocky Series Podcast, Going the Distance. I am your host, Ryan Rebuck, and coming at you live. Okay, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to the show. Today, we have a special episode. If you haven't already seen on Twitter, this podcast named the No Redeeming Qualities Podcast had me on their show. I have posted on Twitter to go listen to the episode that I guest started on. In case you don't have me on Twitter, in case you didn't listen to the episode, I'm going to force feed it down your throat and you're going to listen to it today on my feed. So it's their show, but it's on my feed and I edited it a little bit. So let me just forewarn you here. These guys are very blue. Uh, They have a lot of, uh, (laughs) they're just, you know, they're more, how should I say this? They're just more blue than I am. (laughs) <laughs> but I, I love their show, and I listen to their show faithfully, and I just forewarn you, if you go to their feed to listen to this episode, you will hear cursing and swearing. So it's not safe for work, is what they call it nowadays, what the kids say, not safe for work. So this episode that you're hearing on the Rocky Series Going the Distance podcast feed is safe for work, and you can listen to it, you know, it, with people around you. Uh, so I did do some editing, but if you want to hear the unedited not safe for work version then go ahead and go to their feed and listen to them anyways they're they're fun if you don't mind that type of stuff not everyone's a fan of it but if you want to hear uh, not safe for work discussions go to the no redeeming qualities podcast they talk about a variety of stuff and you'll hear what they're like on this show if this is your kind of thing then go check out their show by all means they're awesome so this is bob and zip of the no redeeming qualities and again i was a guest on their podcast so it's their show they ran the show but yours truly ryan was a guest thanks guys and enjoy Canada dealt with the Nazis at some point in time. There's no. Well, yeah, we we yeah we fought in World War II and won. What? We took care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. That World War II? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> we're talking about the same World War II, oh, right? Man. Okay, so we're we are technically recording, but we haven't like started it yet. So yeah, get sure. Ready. I know. I, sure. I, I I got how it works. Okay. Well. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. Okay. oh all, all right. right. Oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I'll do. You want to do? <laughs> no, this is fantastic. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, that's great. I'm glad. I'm glad. So I was thinking that we would just start. Uh, I would introduce that you're Ryan. Can you can you give us the name? You have a couple podcasts. Can you give us the names of them, please? Sure. So there's the Rocky one, which is called uh, Going the Distance, the Rocky Series podcast. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then there's the Worst of the Best podcast. I'm sorry. So there was only two. I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I could, there was more. Okay, so anyway, we're sitting here with Ryan. You are a podcaster with a heavy, heavy emphasis on Sylvester Stallone, specifically the Rocky franchise. Correct. Correct. <laughs> and you're also a fan of NRQ, and we've known you for a bit, so I think we're going to have a pretty good fun time talking here about uh, you and what you've done and, and Stallone and everything. But before we begin, I wanted to talk about... I decided to do a little research in preparation for this episode. He dug a little deep. And I watched this morning (laughs) the party at Kitty and Studs. Oh, man. You've done something I've never done before. You never watched it? I've seen snippets. I've seen, I put this way, I've seen enough to get the gist of what's going on, but I had not. (laughs) Oh, gosh. (laughs) uh, (laughs) I'll be honest. You want a summary? They stick it together. (laughs) <laughs> they, I believe it. They no, actually, Bob, because I, I told Bob. I told Are you Bob, about to tell me they don't? No, no, that's what I'm going to say. Oh. Like I told Bob, you should watch it too, and that's what we'll bring up. And I, so I watched it this morning, and it's so boring. They don't have sex. Mm-hmm. They roll around. It's literally Stallone and some naked lady, and it's it's soft core, air core. Air quote softcore porn. Even in softcore, okay. they mime having sex together. I mean, they did, but it was more kind of like extended role. It was really boring. And then he just like rolling around Stallone, literally posing in front of the mirror while in the background. There's like two naked ladies, one of which was black. So it was an interracial scene too. Are you trying to say there's something wrong with that? No, <laughs> it was just not what I was expecting in 1969 <laughs> no, uh, porno. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's forward thinking. It uh, that's progressive. Because the movie yeah. came out in like 69 or 70, and it was re-released after he did. It was yeah. re-released as the Italian Stalin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't was think it's quite that early, but I think it was early 70s, and then it was yeah re-released as the Italian Stalin because of the Rocky fame. Yeah. Nice. So it, I didn't see his. 
I was exp- I kind of yeah. thought I was like That's kind of the whole point of watching it, right? Whenever I first heard that he had done a porno, I thought, "Oh, well, right. there's pictures of his floating around then." But I just never went and looked. I just never thought about it. Do you it. think the left side of it droops down like his face? <laughs> it, it might but so, the, uh, I, Apparently there is a cut out there Where that's the rumor So you've seen the quote unquote softer version There might be an x-rated version That's I don't know I've heard rumors But you saw the one where there was no uh, sly penis And I looked I did a little right. I did a little research into it And over the years Because it came out Whatever year it came out And it wasn't a, It was a failure And yeah. so they re-released it As big Who can do and apparently it was a failure again. It's like it was a double box office bomb. <laughs> and they keep trying to ever so often re-release it, I guess, to make it profitable someday. They got in a, a Sylvester Stallone impersonator what? to do hardcore porn scenes. Oh, no. To mix in the fake <laughs> sentimental lovemaking. <laughs> Jesus I mean, Christ. it was like Stallone. That's terrible. I got to watch Stallone take a bath with someone like that. Uh, why did he pose in front of the mirror? What was that about? Was it, it Patrick was, Bateman or like what was that? It looked like he was doing some kind of mirror <laughs> trick where he was petting the woman on her head. But you know, uh, like, hey, it looks like I'm petting you in the was mirror. Was he even I, all cut then? Or no. Was, yeah, that's what I was that, gonna say. No, and no, even, no. And there's even narration scenes where it's the lady. He's like rubbing him, and she's like, <laughs> his muscles are rock hard. And I'm like, he looks. He doesn't look fat. I'm not saying he looks. Like yeah. uh, what? Right. I'm just like he could, baby not, face, though. he could not have just been more of a dude. He was just <laughs> more a guy. Of a dude. Like he's just a guy. He uh, that's hilarious. Still didn't get really cut until Rambo Two. Like that's kind of when everybody talks about it. Like that's when Stallone got shredded. Not even yeah. For the Rocky first. Rocky Three Rambo Two. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, you, what, you I, didn't know that? I guess I never really so throughout paid Rambo to one. It. He's wearing like a burlap sack for most. Yeah, of you never movie. really. Also, Rambo but first blood's first not blood. first blood's not like this insane shoot 'em up. Oh, have I not told movie, you that story? Like people like because Rambo two is right. So what's what story? Oh, that's what I, when I was a kid, I'd never seen any of the Rambo movies, and so I asked my uncle to go to Blockbuster, take me to Blockbuster, let's get Rambo. And I was all right, you got it, and we got First Blood, and I was so. Bored. <laughs> oh I, no, that's terrible. It is terrible. Because there's a lot of nuance to the first one. It's more like subtle. It's more and, about the fact that he has PTSD yeah, and he's been abandoned. I was looking for literally him screaming with a machine. Like, Do you know how I've told you that my dad would tell me bedtime stories that were just <laughs> movies he liked? First Blood was one of them. Oh God, very familiar. Oh, he's God. a good man. That's not, a good man. Not kidding. Even with the kills, like, was he? Like having a flashback at the time that he told you? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. It was it was uh, that, and then he would do Easy Rider and Cheech and Chong movies. Yeah. So wow. now that I now that I'm saying this out loud, it's pretty obvious. All of those are very inappropriate for a child. All of them. <laughs> those are movies my dad wouldn't even tell me the name of until I got older to make sure I didn't go look them up and watch them. We were in a we were in a hotel room once when I was a kid because my mom would travel all the time for work and she would get to bring us and we would just have to spend the day bored in the hotel and then she'd come <laughs> home. And, my, and I was young too. I was like eight or nine. I'm sitting in the one bed kind of like pretending to be asleep. My dad's in the other TV's on. It's a soft core porno. And it's literally Party like, studs? <laughs> and, it's, and it's like the guy walking away from the camera and then like it reveals that he's naked and then it like right. he takes her panties off. And my dad, the whole time I'm looking at it, my eyes are probably the size of saucer plates, you know, I'm like what? And my dad's looking at me and then looking at it and then looking at me. And then he's finally like, Nah, yeah, okay. And he changes the channel, and I'm like, that was so much apprehension. Like, <laughs> like that should have been. Wow, that should have been immediate. <laughs> Wait, before you go, before you go further, uh, yeah, that's amazing that you watched that film. I, I'm just curious, how did you, how did you watch it? In what format? The 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 Stallone porno? Yeah, oh, yeah. Porn. Like, how did you find it? You just <laughs> Pornhub. It's amazing. Oh, this is really on Pornhub. Porn Pornhub. Yeah. Now the real one's like 70 minutes long, and there's oh there's my chunks. God. There's like chunks of it. Throughout, I can't even imagine. I watched that, about twelve minutes and I was quite bored. Would never. Like, oh, okay. So you haven't seen the full full film itself as a film. You no, just no, saw no, the no. actual party. You just saw the party itself. Yes, I did not get. Oh, and then it started with this incredibly long scene of Stallone running and playing through the snow. What? That's awesome. So, so okay, it starts with it starts with it's like Stallone. I mean, like the girl is like getting ready at the apartment, and it's Stallone who who is just looks like Rocky, just full on that 
Right. You know, just bum. It is him. It is yeah. him. That is true. <laughs> he might have just been wearing the same clothes that he wore in the Rocky movie. And it's him running through a park in New York that's covered in snow, and he keeps slipping in the ice and stuff, but he's getting up and he's running. And so at first I think it's like, man, he wants that. No, like he's just like <laughs> flying through this field. And then he stops and does an extended, like, Jumps on a jungle gym and climbs to the top and does like the Drago with his arms up, like, yeah, I'm about to get laid. Like, I don't know what he used. What's the point? I don't know. And then it starts. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, is it a movie? <laughs> yes, it's like a, yes, like a that, full yeah, thing. special yeah. movie, yeah. Okay, yeah. I thought you were telling me it was 70 minutes of pornography. And I was like, I would never even consider the thought of watching 70 full minutes of pornography. That would never cross you my mind. You can't even when the video with the with the video is too long. You can't even like conveniently navigate. Oh, that's from upsetting. Scene to scene. Yeah, oh, that's you're, upsetting. You're always, sorry, sorry. I know how much you wanted. Welcome no, I was just to the porno podcast. So Ryan, on your show, do you talk about a lot of porno? <laughs> Uh, that's a negative. It's very, uh, it's pretty PG. It's pretty uh, non-blue. So you guys are, uh, I listen to you guys religiously. Uh, I've started at the very beginning. I'm like on episode 60 or 70 now. I'm getting, I'm getting high up there now. I'm in 2018 now, which is a good sign. Oh my okay, good. God. So you're, it's finally starting to get good. You, no, I, I've, I've listened to every episode and, uh, I, I love your stuff. I listen to that which I don't do, if that makes sense. There's no point in listening to what I already do. So I listen to that which I don't produce. So I'm, I'm happy to hear your guys' humor and your jokes. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's not what I put on my show, per se. So we're, we're your outlet for the blue. Like, we're... Absolutely. We're, okay, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, the show is called No Redeeming Qualities. So yeah. that is kind of the point. This is what you put on when your kids aren't in the room. That's right. <laughs> I'm hoping to edit this for my feed, but there's going to be a lot of chopping. It's going to be like a 12-minute uh, video, just oh. like the, what, 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 you, what you saw. You, you might want to just bleep it out because it's going to be so- – <laughs> I love it. No, I love it. It's good. So My mom I, listens, so I'll be interested to hear how, how I package this. Your mother is listening to this? Not right now, but oh, she listens oh, to my feed. Oh, 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 oh. oh, God. Okay. Uh, so something to but don't 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 change anything. Don't. This is your show. This is your oh, show. No. I want to hear your stuff. Oh yeah, don't worry oh, about that. Don't worry. So okay, good. Something we were gonna do to kind of uh, keep the conversation going is a, a game that we're stealing from uh, Doug Loves Movies or one of those Matter. TV contests, whatever. Sure. Where I want us to go through, and we're each gonna talk about our favorite Stallone movie that's good, your favorite okay. Stallone movie that could be potentially bad. Mm-hmm. We want you to talk about a. Sh- Stallone movie that you just enjoy watching, and then okay. just one that's bad. I can already tell you this is going to devolve into just shouting about different movies. Like, I mean, that's that was kind of it's the, not going to follow the format. But that's after the like point. I'm not saying that you do that all at the same time. I'm saying throughout the so, course of the episode. So, like right now, I want us to immediately start. Each of us say, "What is your favorite Stallone movie that's good? Like that is just like that's a good Stallone." That's not Rocky or Rambo because those are kind of yeah, easy ones, say, right? Oh, well, you can't out. do that to me because that's most of my answers involve Rambo or Rocky. Oh, well, what were you thinking? Okay, well, what game did you come up with? I was literally trying to think outside of those two franchises, so I'm thinking, all right, here's one. That Fine, we'll scratch the idea. No, we're already that I worked it. so hard. <laughs> what was the one you liked? First Blood. Okay, okay. It's a great movie yeah. about an it underappreciated, <laughs> about the underappreciated Vietnam War veterans. Look, that movie could have been boiled down to one scene: the one where they're spraying them with the water hose and the blousing powder. Don't spray somebody down like that if you don't want them to (laughs) To murder your whole town. They drew first. Did they even draw first blood? Oh, they kicked him around. Like that was it. He like threw one of them out of a helicopter. Oh, they drew first blood. Absolutely, yeah. They drew blood uh, in the police station. Yeah, I was gonna say they punched. They they punched him right in the nose and stuff. Yeah, I didn't know that. I always kind of thought first blood was more the killing because it's like. (laughs) If it was like, if all it took was one punch to be like, okay, well, I guess he did go through great lengths to get away from them, and they kept. He really did do everything he possibly could to get away from those people. So what's the uh, what's the kill count in First Blood? Not not high, right? It's only about probably less than fifteen towns worth of people. No, he one didn't. person. What? Only one person died in First Blood. You are right. Was they it? changed it in the, in the in the book. He kills everybody. But in the movie, you're right. Yeah, he only kills the, the guy. Well, in the, the book, he dies. 
Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. In the book, he actually dies. Oh, they filmed that scene, and they decided against it. But like, you know that, right? Yeah. 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 It is. It yeah. is. It was very depressing. It's very bleak. <laughs> yeah. Who, so the only that person would have been he, interesting to see. The only person he killed was the guy in the helicopter, right? That's right. And he killed him with a rock. Mm. Oh, well. Yeah, he did. It was very brutal. I forgot about that. And then so everybody went into... Uh, Rambo, First Blood, Part Two, whatever the hell it's called, thinking this is going to be just like that first one, and then it no, <laughs> literally, no. he literally blew someone up with a bow and arrow with an explosive on the tip. Do you remember who uh, co-wrote that film? No, Part Two, uh, James Cameron. No way. See, yeah, I have a feeling that this dude's a, just a like a, we- a wealth pool of knowledge on. I'm into it on 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 uh, Stallone movies. My, my dad, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> my dad knew a producer. He helped him make his like independent film that he did, and the producer also worked with uh, Stallone on Ra- Rambo Three, the one in Afghanistan or whatever, and. Yep. Uh, he apparently, because he used to be the guy that would literally wake Stallone up in the morning when he was being an ass and wouldn't drag his ass to set. And so right. he was his personal guy, and he said he gave his phone number away on a local radio station, and Stallone never talked to him again. Ah, that's so, funny. <laughs> is, does Stallone have a reputation of being a prima donna? Sometimes. Really? Uh, uh, well, okay, how should I say this? I, I've never met him, and I, I've... He'll find you. Um, <laughs> no, no, not that. It's not like that. I mean, I, I would just it's argue like that. that anybody in their... I would argue, without knowing anything officially, put it this way, <laughs> that when you're the, the biggest star in the world in the 80s, mm-hmm. and you're in your 30s and late 30s, early 40s, come the 90s, and you're, like, getting paid $20 million a film or whatever it is in box office draw, you're, you know, you're a rock star, you're a movie star, you're, you're the top of the world, and, you know, you snap your fingers people jump up and I, it's going to affect people but i think in his golden years now he's 72 you can see that he's much more humble and gracious than he probably ever has been and he has said that he regrets his behavior when he was younger like he he knows that he was a harley a hollywood star and that uh, he acted that way so he's acknowledged it it's not really a secret and i think he regrets it because he's, he's not that person today i picture him literally scooping coke out of a bowl with his hand and screaming at people. No, he never did drugs. He, ne- he never did drugs like that. No, he, he was always so health conscious. He never did stuff like that. Okay, but. you've seen Cobra, right? Oh, yeah. Do you remember the scene in Cobra where he takes a slice of pizza out of a box and yeah. cuts it in half with a pair of scissors? Yeah. <laughs> He was on a diet. He couldn't even fake eating on a movie screen. <laughs> he literally Did he cut it long ways or half ways? Half ways. Like he cut the tip literally, off? Yeah, he cut the tip off. And so the whole movie that's kind I of like his, crust. <laughs> it's like his bit. He's like making fun of people for eating shitty. It's like that's, that's right. A, that's a terrible character trait. That's negative. Nobody likes that guy. But it's like you, you really saved a lot of calories cutting your pizza in half. So Do you remember when yeah. we saw uh, uh, was it John Rambo or Rambo? Rambo. Just Rambo. Yeah, it was originally called John Rambo, and I really wish they kept that. Because it's funny, because when he did Rocky Part Six, it was called Rocky Balboa. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the rumor was that Rambo was going to follow the same thing. It was going to be called John Rambo. And I thought, that's a great idea, have your two main characters who have their whole name as your last movie. But they went with just Rambo, which was disappointing. So anyways, go on. I can't believe he didn't put his full name. It was just... It, I know. It we, devastated we me. Wouldn't, Bob, you and I wouldn't actually... We were, I think we were in high High school, right? No, yeah, I think we were in high school. We could have been for sure. We went. And I wasn't saw devastated, that. Bob. I wasn't <laughs> devastated. I was just a, as a fan. I was irritated that it would have been cooler. That's all. Jeez, that's <laughs> that movie was so much more violent than I. It was amazing. I, it was. It was. It really shocked me. I mean, I loved it. I thought it was great. <laughs> but I remember being oh, yeah. in the theater, just like. Damn! Just like, <laughs> wow! Oh my god! I he him. even he even went and yeah, said that it was it that. was too much, you know, which I disagree. It's with. a little. I don't think we're gonna see that in part five. I really don't. I wish we would. You know, speaking of cart or in the cartel, uh, Rambo. It's five. The Bob. Do you know what the official title for it is? Rambo five. Last Blood. Oh! That's great. Hold That's on. a great title. That's They, they did the right job on, on part five. But Last Blood is p- kind of the perfect name. And it's it supposed yeah. to take place, uh, or excuse me, it's going to take place, what, on the Texas-Mexico border, and it involves Arizona. Like, oh, Arizona. Yeah, Ariz- uh, yeah the Arizona. He lives in Arizona. Well, the character lives in Arizona. Okay, and yeah. Because I always remember that him it's a- going back to some ranch, and I could never tell yeah. where it was. It's his father's ranch. Oh. 
because he was a uh, Rambo. The character was uh, raised on a farm. He was a farm boy. He ra- that's why he, the nerd alert here. That's why he was so good at riding horses in part three. Uh, he was a horse uh, a horse wrangler, and he worked on a farm. and And uh, so he went back to that farm, his father's farm. One of his family friends gets kidnapped by sex, sex trafficking people in Mexico, so he goes down there to free her. He's going to kill a lot of sex traffickers I, in the I, process. I don't know why they wouldn't make that as violent as the fourth <laughs> one. Because that's, like, perfect. It's fighting a cartel. I'm not, I'm not saying they're not going to. I, I, right. I just wonder if they're going to. That's oh, all. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm but gonna, I'm sure it's going to be violent. I'm sure it's going to be violent. I just don't know if it's going to be, uh, like, a 50 cal tearing people apart from – yeah, you know, that's, half an hour that's pretty much what everybody remembers is when he turns it into the Jeep and there's literal <laughs> just, just pieces gore of steak. flying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're actually going to take our first break. Mm-hmm. And when we come back, oh, yeah, these we're going to yeah. oh, yeah. oh, see what happens here. Are essential. Oh, you're going to get to. Oh, Look, my God. He he's, he doesn't have any idea what's yeah, about to happen so when we go on break. They, we we stopped no like three hours at a time. Yeah. So just well, get ready. We'll be right back. We're going to we'll watch right, a Rambo For movie. the listener, it's going to be a couple seconds at a commercial. For Ryan, it could be an eternity. It could so. be two days. In a world that grows darker with fear and crime. Oh, God. My fucking truck. Sip, these people are immune to pain. We can't stop them. Two men stand in the way of the total collapse of the Texas government. Are you implying someone pushed the governor down a staircase for their own sexual satisfaction? Bob and Ziv, of no redeeming qualities, in the search to find a man that's done an unthinkable crime. And do you think they want it getting out that the governor of the freaking state mac and meat his ass down a staircase because of one? A tale of mystery. I think you're going to find out shortly just how much high roller can blur the line. Suspense. Look, we met this girl downtown and she said if she could lick our bruises, she would tell us who pushed the governor down a staircase. Unnecessary violence. And true friendship. Did you get those chicken sandwiches? Yeah, all eight of them, you disgusting mother... The newest exciting addition to the world of true crime. Hey, y'all didn't tell me the name of your show. Can I find y'all on America Online? We follow the boys from NRQ on the trail to catch the man that tried to kill the governor. Ah, Christ! He has ran on my fingers! In Wheels of Justice. Make sure to check out Wheels of Justice at iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and anywhere else you can find the No Redeeming Qualities podcast. You can also find Wheels of Justice and much, much more at nrqpodcast.com. Actually, we can start talking again. All right. Okay, good. (laughs) There we go. There we go. How do you feel so far, Ryan? Good? Good. Yeah, yeah. I hope uh, hope I'm doing okay. You guys are are great. You're uh, doing better than most people, to be entirely honest. (laughs) Yeah. Well, he's an actual podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an actual podcast. No, no, I, I enjoy listening to you. I'm half enjoying just listening to you guys talk. Like I'm on listening to an episode. I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta say something. I'm not just <laughs> listening to you guys. <laughs> that should be one of our Patreon incentives. What's <laughs> so that? You can just you, you can listen you can to us just while we do it. Listen to it. I guess that is called Facebook Live, which I will Ooh. never do. <laughs> Oh no! No, I I, I, res- I know you do it, and I know actually a lot of podcast. Mo- it seems like the majority of podcasters like to film themselves with the Facebook Live and all that yeah. shit while they're recording. I'm like, no, yeah. no. To me, yeah, this is we, the this is like yeah. the, <laughs> this we is do s- it that way. It's weird. I, I'm kind of torn because it's like uh, you know everything that we do is like live, like it's a true live recording, and for Facebook and for YouTube. But then I take that audio and then I edit it for iTunes. So all the ums and the ahs or any joke that doesn't make it for the audio listeners. They hear, quote unquote, the clean, good product. But some people like watching it live or watching the live recording. It's weird. What's your least favorite Stallone movie? <laughs> oh, there's so many. Yeah. I mean, I love Sly and I love him as an actor. And I, just like you're saying, I, I love movies that aren't good. You know they're not good and they're not liked by critics, but you still love them. But you know what? I'll, I'll say this for an answer for a hot take. This is my least favorite Stallone movie that's liked by a lot of people. Yeah, if that makes sense, because it's easy to say something like something from straight to video or something silly like that. Right. That's an easy, an easy target. 
But one of his more popular films is one that I just never liked, even when it came out. And maybe I haven't watched it in a while, but it's Cobra. Oh, yeah? oh. No, no, let me explain. Let me explain. So Cobra is well loved. And a lot of my listeners are going to be like, Ryan, I'm going to stop listening to you now. And that's fine. Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to reviewing it on our show one day and making my case. And maybe, like I said, I haven't seen it in like probably two decades. Okay. And I it's saw just when Cobra, it came. And yeah. it is. Bad. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I remember. Like, because I, I saw it when I was, you know, a teenager, and I was a Sly fan. Like, I saw it when I was a teenager and a Sly fan. But I remember leaving, thinking that was really grisly and odd and weird all at the same time. It just felt weird. It's it's. Oh, there's something about a guy who's trying, like, a character who's supposed to be a badass, but then is super weird and kind of reserved or kind of conservative. Yeah. Like he won't drink or smoke and he like, not like that's a thing they have to do, but he's chewing matchsticks instead. Yes. Cause that's yeah, the, super the cool. The toothpick is weird. The, yeah. The toothpick <laughs> was weird. And he's always bitching about people's diets. And the, well, I don't even know this movie. Oh, really? Okay. So the point is, well, you can help me out here, so Ryan. So Cobra. Sure. Or, this Cobra. is the one where he's got like a jean jacket and an Uzi. It's a leather jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and he's he's got sunglasses and he's chewing a two or no a matchstick. The whole thing is his last name is Cobretti because he refuses right. to play a non-Italian, and I support him for that. But it's uh, short and a Cobra, and I think he's stopping a cult. If I'm correct, a cult uh, that drives like classic 1950s Model yeah. T's or something. Oh, cult. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, the best part of the movie was the car chase, mind you. I like the the scene in the uh, the gas station or the convenience store. Right. Where, uh, he's essentially the world's largest advertisement for Pepsi you've ever seen. It's right. wall to wall <laughs> Pepsi. And I think he he pops one open <laughs> while he's he something fighting. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's like behind a wall of Pepsi's and is gonna get out and shoot the guy, but he pops one open and drinks it while he's waiting to shoot the guy. It's horrible. Well, I personally, this might be controversial for some people. I don't think it is though. Rocky Four is a bad movie. No. I mean, objectively, <laughs> no. it's, the, it's half of it is a montage. Yeah, it was like, the first like, time they ever did that, and it blew our minds. But like ten minutes of the ultimate runtime is like clips of other Rocky movies. Okay, that's that's kind of goofy. <laughs> like the fact yeah, that it's, it's other yeah. montages. I love Rocky Four. It's one of the most entertaining movies ever made. It's great. It destroyed communism. But... <laughs> We can all agree it's just him working out to music, right? Yeah. I mean. No, that's fair. That's fair. I'll say this. Rocky IV now, the way it is. You remember, uh, you ever watched Lord of the Rings? The, the, the trilogy, Lord of the Rings? I've, I've heard of it, yeah. You know. Okay. Somebody mentioned it to me once. Okay, don't be silly. Have you seen the movie? Yes, yeah, exactly. yeah. movie. Well, I don't know. Some people hate those movies. Some people, <laughs> some people hate those movies, so I don't know, right? But remember the beginning, the first film, the beginning when they do the whole like the big huge prelude, showing the ring and how it came to be and all that stuff. Yes, yeah, but it's yeah. almost like a movie. Well, that's what Rocky Four is to Creed Two now. You can always put Rocky Four at the beginning of Creed Two. Okay, I'm gonna come out and say I think the Creed movies suck. It's just oh, I'm please, not into please it. Tell. I please think tell it's like okay, let's rehash uh, Rocky, but let's just put a new young guy in there, yeah. and he's from the streets too, but they're different streets. So oh, he was rich. He was raised rich. Like, oh, you're right. It's Creed's son. I'm an idiot. Anyway, no, no, it's okay. No, he originally was a foster kid. You're right. Mm -hmm, like because mm -hmm. he was Creed's love child, and he was eventually adopted by Creed's uh, widow. Yeah. But that being said, I mean, at the age of what eight or nine, maybe ten, he was from ten onward. He had a life of luxury. Yeah. Now, and people love that movie, and I think it's just ham-fisted. Like the dialogue is kind of boring. The fight isn't that interesting. The villain is literally non-existent and unimportant. I cannot tell you who he fights in that movie. Who does no, he fight? No, you're right about... You're right, uh, like Danny Wheeler. Who that? You don't know Danny uh, Wheeler? No! Do you? No. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of Rocky Balboa, though? Okay, that's good. Let's ask him first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Part six? Yeah, yeah. yes. That's a tough one. Uh, Have y'all gotten really, to that yet? Y'all are still on five, right? Yeah, we're, we're, we just started part five. Okay. Uh, Rocky, well, Rocky six, I, I really like... And I really, really like. I mean, I like all the movies, right? But it's uh, funny enough, it's the one I've seen the least. Yeah, 
I mean, so I don't know. What, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it means because I'm not that enthralled by it, but it's just one I've seen the least. No, you've just had more time, literally yeah. more time with the other five around. Sure, yeah, that's a good point. I, yeah, I was raised on the first four. Yeah. yeah, I watched it in theaters when it came out, and that would have mm-hmm. been what oh six, oh seven, and I don't think I have watched a millisecond of it since. I've seen it a couple oh, of times. Wow. I bought it from Blockbuster when they were doing all those like going uh, out of business yeah, sales. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And uh, the one thing I remember that I really liked about about it was essentially them coming to terms with the style that he was going to have to fight, where they're like, look, you're old as crock. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> look at me. You ain't got, you're slow. Let's beat the shit out of him. And he goes, yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah. Build some hurting bombs. That was my favorite yeah. line of the movie. Yeah. There's uh, some really great parts in that film. It's, you know, his speech to his son regarding, you oh. know, the famous speech that we all see a thousand times on the internet. Yeah. Because they put it in every motivational workout video you've ever yeah. seen. You're correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's great. Like, don't get me wrong. It's just overused in a lot of those things, but no, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the flaming pile of dog that is Rocky five. Well, that's what we're talking about right now on our show. Go the distance, the Rocky series podcast. There you go. Plug, Plug it up. Plug it, baby. Plug it. Going. Yeah. The so distance. we're, yeah, we're covering, uh, we're covering Rocky five right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and uh, can, season, you, can you explain season five? Can you explain to everybody the, the format of the show, how yeah. y'all pretty much pick, pick these movies apart <laughs> by like sure, yeah. the scene by scene. I yeah. do have to say when I first started listening to it, I go, Oh my God, they talk about every line of dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, don't don't oversell me to your audience. No, no, you goodness. guys don't understand. It wasn't even that. This you, is <laughs> the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> what even that? It was uh, the scene in Rocky IV where all the newspapers flipped by, and you read all of the headlines on the newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely <laughs> correct. We have to like, pause it That's over. Awesome. Like, is that? <laughs> Yeah, you had to do it in slow mo, right? How did y'all get through that? Well, isn't that great though? I mean, that's what oh, people want to hear. Oh, it was hilarious. Hear. I mean, that's yeah, that's we, the beauty of podcasting, right there, is that you're able to yeah. take such a specific interest and 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 yeah. channel it to, you know, an audience. Which I did want to mention that back in December, y'all were slotted to be featured in an article in Sports Illustrated. Mm, right? Yeah, and you, and you yes. got edited out at the last second. Oh no! Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, we were interviewed by Sports Illustrated, and it was like a 30-minute audio interview. Damn. And as luck would have it, we even recorded the interview, but we only we lost 18 minutes of the recording on our stupid phone software. Uh, I know, so we haven't even released that part of it. So not only did we lose our recording, but we didn't even make the article. Well, they probably wanted to cut it out so they could do more body issues and have naked Prince Filder in there. I yeah. love the body <laughs> issue. I'm going to tell you right now, I absolutely love it. But real quick, before we do talk about the body issue, <laughs> I, I just wanted to congratulate you on that because even though you didn't make the final you know, publish, uh, publication or what have you, I mean, that's about the highest thing I think a podcast can aim to achieve, right? I mean, it's yeah, it was pretty cool. They contacted by, us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was I pretty mean, cool. So anyway, it was an honor. It was an honor. The body issue. What about it, Bob? I love the body issue. One, because I love thick women. So all the sports that you take photographs of the female athletes, the ones that are weird, not like tennis, which not my type of lady, but like the hammer throw woman. Yeah, the oh hammer my throw woman. God. My mom even told, like, she'd asked me about the body issue. And I told her that they had like a, an Olympic hammer throw woman on there. And my mom just looked at me, and I, it, it's like one of those things you remember. And she was like, you looked at her, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you, went, you went and looked, though, didn't you? <laughs> and I did. Yeah. I mean, she was thick in a way that was, like, hard to even comprehend. Like, Remember that time that I you— I felt bad for her almost because, like, that can't be a body type women want to be, like, a perfect rectangle like was she was. It was delicious to me. <laughs> but do uh, you remember when you with your mom that one time and told her her favorite football player was in the body issue and it was— she thought it was J.J. Watt and it was Vince Wilfork? <laughs> 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 that may be lost on you, Ryan. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. No, that's fine. That's oh, yeah, fine. yeah. You're up in uh, old Canada. You got— Canadian the, football. Yeah, all the uh, Toronto Argonauts. Yeah, that's what we all sound like when we're up here talk yeah. like that, you know? You know, John Candy on the Argonauts for a little bit there. Sorry, yeah. I am done with that now. That was No, that was, I, I love... Well, you hear my Canadian accent, how bad it is, so there you go. It's not even that bad. It's it not even comes that bad. every subtle. other word you say. It's so, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, anyway, so, Rocky Five. what do you think about it? 
Well, it's funny. If I was looking at it objectively, it's aged better in 20, let's see, it came out in 1990. So it's been 29 years already since it came out, if you can believe that. Yes, I can uh, believe it. It's upsetting. Yeah, it's weird. But it's, you know, but it, it, in many ways it's aged okay compared to some of like the scenes from Rocky 3 and 4, if that makes sense. <laughs> Though 3 and 4 are fun movies, like they're fun you to watch. You mean Hulk Hogan giving him the backbreaker? <laughs> yeah. Thunder lips! Exactly. The ultimate male versus the ultimate meeple, yeah. You, you so, interviewed Tommy, Tommy Morrison, right? Or no, 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 his no, no. Widow. He's his dead. widow. He's long dead. He died of AIDS. Did you ask her if he had AIDS? Oh, God. Okay, well, can I just recommend to your listeners to listen to that episode? I didn't know you did that. Hell yeah, I'll go listen to that. Yeah. Uh, what, what, yeah number, sorry, what number or date would that be? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll look it Approximately. up. Approximately. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. Well, too it was bad. In, it was in season, it was in season four. There nope, you go. Too late. Okay, Everybody, to don't listen. Season. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to actively discourage people. Or <laughs> that's fine. Well, that's no, okay. You, it, won't you, ch- it won't change our numbers. You've gotten, <laughs> some, you've gotten some pretty big interviews, though. Yeah. Well, you, well speaking of Rocky Five, uh, do you remember the, the actor or the character George Washington Duke? No. Black guy, right? The black guy that, that yeah. was uh, that undermined uh, Rocky's apprentice Tommy Gunn there and got him the, the Don King type. I was going to say the Don yeah. King guy. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I interviewed. I just interviewed him for our show. Ah, did he have yeah. any decent? Sh- it's a really not, not to toot my own horn. It was a really good episode and it was a really okay. good interview. He, he gave a lot of good uh, background stuff and a lot of uh, insight about the Rocky Five filming and why it went to crap. <laughs> He actually can tell you why it was a shitty movie. Well, it's funny. I don't want to give away the interview, and I because I just listen to it because I surprised him with a couple of things that he wasn't aware of, but he gave some insight as to why things were the way they were. We Let do me. that to people all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay, I'm gonna say it right now. No, it did not age better than Rocky three or four. It is horrible. I don't. I can't <laughs> remember the last time I've sat down and watched. Like we 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 because watched that marathon. Not want to we, watch it. Yeah, we watched watched all of oh yeah three and four in a row and then yeah. five came on and we gave up yeah we literally just turned it <laughs> off no because i'll tell you what because it takes the most important element of the movies out of it he never fights in a boxing ring he just kind of yeah, no you're absolutely right so yeah. I, let me uh, let me speak to that and i am i'm totally my listeners are probably tired of hearing this so but i i totally agree with you that rocky five works it, put it this way Rocky Five for me when I first saw it, and to this day, it's like a six or seven out of ten until the last twenty minutes. Like it's a it's a fine drama. It's not a bad movie to show the loss that he went through. You know, training a new guy. And you're right. If he's if he said to Tommy, that's fine. Let's finish this, but we're doing it in the ring. We're doing it proper. Yeah. And it would have yeah. been teacher versus student. And Stallone had a wicked build then still. Yeah. So right. there would have been no he shame in him. He still does. He's huge. He's yeah. on a lot of HGH. And yeah, he has to be. Sure. He got sure. caught in Australia with HGH. Yeah. That's fine. You still have to do something with it. You just can't take it. But, yeah. <laughs> but the, point, the point is, I, I, I agree with you, Bob. I totally agree with you that if that ended in the ring, and it would have been like, I could have seen it like, Totally different movie. Just destroying, destroying Tommy like in two rounds, and oh, that would have yeah. been it. And then he could, then he could have said to Tommy over, like going over him in the knockout fight or whatever, leaning over him, saying, "You know, you were like a son to me." And that could have been the ending, kind of. And then he would have given his money to the charity or something like that. I think it would have been. I think it would have still had a rocky ending, man, uh, with with a little bit of revenge at the end at the same time. But no, they blew it with the street fight, and, I, and I'm going to stick with that. Yeah, I also remember that I was too young to understand what power of attorney meant, so I had no idea why Rocky lost all of his money. Right, but you understand what a power attorney is now, though. Now I do, yeah, but oh, when boy. I was a child... My, I'm, I'm his power of attorney. <laughs> I dare you to like, consider what my dad went through trying to explain power of attorney to my five-year-old self. I have no way made... Hold on. You are my power of attorney. Yeah. That, oh my, that's scary. That is scary. I need to change that. I mean, only if you, you die. <laughs> my mom was my, and you were always my backup. Yeah, yeah, and now yeah. she's gone. So I thought Jill was. That's not important. <laughs> anyway. I need, no, because if I were in a car wreck on the way home, you pick if well, I not die or not. St- I mean, yeah, I know better. <laughs> that's not important. I mean, it is, but later. Anyway, so Rocky Five sucks. What do you have to say about it, Zip? I just, yeah, I've never, I would be totally willing if we were asked to be on your podcast ryan uh uh i always forget the official name <laughs> going the okay. rocky we, series we podcast too. going the distance yeah i would watch rocky five again 
I would give yeah, it a shot, and it, then yeah. I would, yeah, I would, I would need, to, I would need to see it again, begrudgingly. Begrudgingly, but I watch yes, it, yes. <laughs> I will watch it. God. Well, we do, I know you guys wanted to do the uh, French the French teacher scene, but it was actually a lot earlier than we thought. Uh, we just recorded that episode. Um, I forgot how early in the movie that that scene was. But is there? Do you guys want to maybe come on for the street fight, or is there another part you want to do, and then Let's, we'll get you on? Maybe we yeah, we'll make a note to watch it. We'll watch and the we'll shit figure out on. where we think we fit in. Yeah. Okay. But, something in the last last half would probably be good by the time you watch it, and then by the time we get to that part in the recording. Yeah. Well, we're actually. I'm gonna go on break here, and okay. we're gonna use that break to watch Rocky Five in its entirety. Oh wow! And then we're gonna wow. come back. So let's build my some hurt. My wife's gonna kill me. Hey everybody, Zip here. Let me let you in on a little secret. You see, we get all kinds of crazy stats, so we can tell that the average NRQ listener listens to the show either on the way to work, at work, or on the way home. Now, we always want everyone to make sure they subscribe to our RSS feed through iTunes, but just so you all know, we have a YouTube channel too, with every episode posted at the same time an episode drops on the feed. And we all know how easy it is to make a playlist on YouTube, so if you're a desk jockey sitting there all day in your cubicle, super easy, just look us up at the No Redeeming Qualities YouTube channel. Subscribe today. Do you ever say hoser? Yeah. How often do you say hoser? Never. I knew it! It's just a lie. It was a lie from Strange Brew. It might have been. It might have been something in the '80s, but it was. You never hear it. You never hear an everyday Canadian talk. It's, the, 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 the description even they give is this: what you call your little brother when your parents are in the room. That's there you say. go. Uh, okay. So, one more thing I wanted to touch on with Rocky. Um, what do you think that there's a big missed opportunity, Bob and Ryan? Do you, do you think that like if UFC and MMA had been bigger? closer to Stallone being in his prime like if instead of Rocky 5 we got Rocky tries to go into the into the octagon to fight that would be so upsetting you think that would no, be no that's, that, that's your that's your Rocky 5 problem right there so I think that would have been the same issue yeah. he doesn't Just, belong but, but in that type of thing I don't know. I wouldn't have been as happy with it, to be honest. Yeah, I was not being Because I guess you would have to learn a lot. Yeah. to learn a lot of stuff other than boxing. And UFC has that extreme attitude to they, it that pisses have, me off. The, the, the just bleed crowd. Yeah, the uh, anything affliction or, yeah. You, you know, it. you remember the just bleed guy, right? I think so. The very first yeah. UFC event, he painted, like, just bleed on his face. And he didn't have his shirt on, and he was like... Flexing in front of the camera. Oh my god! Like, oh, who was oh, that oh. Canadian guy who went all the way to oh, the end? Oh, oh, Harold Howard. Howard Harold. Some <laughs> silly name. He's a. He's. They call him the Canadian Superman. He's. I'm surprised oh. you never heard of him, Ryan. He's. He's no. in the early UFCs. Oh. UFC three. He's oh. the only. He's the only person in the early early UFC days to have a defeat over a Gracie. You know what they Grace say? Right. Because Gracie had to leave the fight before when it started. When you're coming on, come Didn't on. Didn't you have a mustache? What? Did he have a mustache or something? Oh, yeah! He had a mullet, and he did, like, a front flip when the fight started, and he did beat the shit out of one guy, oh, so, yeah. I mean... He wasn't an idiot, <laughs> but, uh, All right, so I have a correction for you from your Rocky Four episode. You do oh, realize The Ring magazine is a real magazine, right? Did I say it was a fake magazine? You did! Oh. Are you being like Simpsons nerd? No, 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 no. Right now, I, said, I was actually, I'm a big boxing enthusiast. I was when I was younger. No, the Ring Magazine is actually, it's been one of the oldest boxing publications out there, other than the Police Gazette. But not only that, they have their own championship title and belt that they give to who they think is the best boxer at like, this point in time. So they don't they don't actually fight for the belt. Correct. It's, a, it's just awarded. It's a designation. They okay. essentially go like, oh, you beat that okay. guy, you're I better. believe you. Mm-hmm. Good. I believe you. I just don't know why I would have said it was a fake magazine because I, I don't. I was, hear you and I believe you. It was but literally I don't know why that I scene where you were going through all of the <laughs> newspaper titles. No, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, no, that's, that's legit. Yeah. We don't know everything. We just we're just stupid enough to talk about it for five seasons. So are you all just into the Rocky movies, or do you like boxing and reality also? No, I don't really. I mean, I don't follow boxing uh, professional, like professional boxing. I don't follow UFC. It's it's more about the character that Rocky represents than his actual prowess in the ring. I'm a Rocky nerd, not a boxing nerd. So yeah. you're telling me you didn't grow up with the poster of Lennox Lewis on your wall? Oh no. Okay, you know he's Canadian. The British guy, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, yeah the Canadian British guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we no, I, you know, I watched Tyson fights and stuff, of course, like everybody else. I was never into boxing where I could give you any kind of insight to boxing as a sport. Okay, so some some non non boxing Rocky Stallone stuff. 
What do you think of Death Race 2000? It's been so long since I've seen it. I can't even really comment uh, on it. That's, that's, that, that is a, oh, that is like it beautiful, is a schlock. beautiful 70s trash. It's oh, awesome. Yeah, right. Roger Corman, right? And mm-hmm. uh, The only thing. Yeah, <laughs> Machine Gun Joe. The, yeah. big, the big thing that we remember about it. Oh, God. Is, is, we, okay, I don't even want to die. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what? I'll tell you, you the story. It? Yeah, we uh, went to Blockbuster. We were in high school. We went to Blockbuster, and we were like, let's pick a few movies, and we picked up Death Race 2000. So, on our way back from the Blockbuster. We're stopped at an intersection, and we see an ambulance zip by going the other direction. And then another ambulance going the opposite direction on and these we, two roads. And we made a joke. We said that they should have just... <laughs> called each other and been like they need an ambulance over there and they need an ambulance over there yeah. and it was a classmate of ours died yeah so oh, that was where the ambulance was going car accident yeah <laughs> and, and so for now and then we went home and watched death race mm-hmm. and it was great we didn't know it was our friend until afterwards yeah or not our friend our classmate yeah, yeah. well you knew her right yeah, i, knew her I didn't well. know her anyway, i just went to school with her but uh it was pretty horrific yeah she died in a car accident as we were laughing at people being murdered by cars oh yeah then we oh, went wow. and watched the movie about dying in cars. Yeah, for Literally an hour and a half. Literally called Death Race. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Demolition Man. What about sure. it? Sure. So, who here likes Demolition Man? Demolition oh, Man, it's, a, it's, it's a like cliffhanger. It's just, it, it's like Judge Dredd. It just falls into that delicious Actually, 90s action ask, okay. trash. So, did you say Cobra is your least favorite? It's my least favorite popular Stallone film, if that makes sense. What's the one you hate the most of all of them? <sighs> I don't know if there's anyone that I really hate. I mean, stop where my mumble shoot. It's such a disaster. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not even bad enough to... It's 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 just a bad film. It's not even bad enough to think it's a good film that's bad. Like, you know, like The Room. It's almost like that, but it's it's just a terrible film. So that would be an, an easy pick for the worst solo film that was supposed to be not the way it was, if that makes sense. I will say this about Demolition Man. It's Sandra Bullock's only good m- movie. <laughs> uh, have you never seen a little thing called Gravity? <laughs> oh, I, never really? saw gravity. I love gravity, but that's also a very specific fear of mine that they made an entire movie about. Oh my so. god, Sandra Bullock in the blind <laughs> side? Stuck in, my being, god. Being, no, she I'm sorry. I know she has a lot of fans, but she she can't act. I think her best acting role was in Demolition Man, believe it or not. She's a beautiful woman. And that's all that matters. Zip. Is she though? Yes! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you gonna tell me you don't think Sandra Bullock's attractive? Oh, you're killing me, Ryan. Have you seen her? Have you seen her picture next to Michael Jackson? What? No. What? Oh, okay, that's hilarious. Now that I think about that, but still, I mean, no. I, do do, do Sandra Bullock, Michael Jackson. Do a Google search, and you'll never see her the same again. Okay, I already okay, got I it am. I'm head. doing that right yeah, now. I understand. Sandra Bullock, Michael. It pops up automatically. That's mm. not good. What do we got? Huh. Mm-hmm. Well, in defense of Sandra Bullock, she was born a white lady. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Really, it's more you should be like Michael Jackson. You look like a white lady. So I am going to stand my ground. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. on Michael Jackson, not yeah. not on Sandra Bullock. <laughs> speaking of other speaking of other actors and actresses, so I I do like Stallone. I love Stallone movies. Yeah, yeah, I respect yeah, the yeah. fact that he is like actually a writer and a director. And he sure, you know, yeah. people that people give him no credit because mm-hmm. they think he's a big muscle up jock. But well, you know, it's because he, he's had a stroke or something. Yeah, so. yeah. But personally, Schwarzenegger is my guy. Oh yeah, like yeah. I sure, love fine. Schwarzenegger movies. They are my favorite. So mm-hmm. if there were no Stallone out there, who would be who would be your action hero? You got John Claude Van Damme if you're a loser. Yeah. Steven yeah. Seagal if you're a loser. Also losing yeah. lame as f- <laughs> Well, because uh, the problem with your Van Dams and your Steven Seagal movies is that they are all so similar. Yeah, Every right. one of the movies is so so similar to the other ones. But Schwarzenegger actually has Oh, he's got a lot of good variety. Movies. Yeah. Uh, who else? Who else for action know, stars? Well, yeah. Well, look I at mean, the expendables. That's the that <laughs> yeah, well, that's the problem with today's films is we don't, whether you like it or not, we don't have that kind of testosterone on the screen anymore. Like, you take away the superhero power movies. Yeah. You know, so I, I think the guy that's carrying the torch the best right now is, is of course, you know, Dwayne Johnson and yep. Jason Statham. You literally you a good read my mind. That's uh, what yeah, The Rock. I forgot about The Rock. Because so I'll, I'll give full credit to uh, Mr. Johnson. He's He is pretty cool. He's got a lot of charisma on screen. I like him as a wrestler. I, I did watch wrestling. There you go. I didn't watch yeah. boxing, but I watched wrestling. Nothing wrong but with that. But that being said, yeah, well, I, I loved the, the WWF I back when it was right WWF. Now. 
if Mick Foley was an action star, I would watch every single well, movie. But, he but you did. know what? Though? These guys are though. These guys are action stars. And not to get all corny and cliche about wrestlers, but they're performing what live. Do you do your bodies? It's what, what? still real to me, damn it. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Mick Foley, a Mick Foley action movie would just be him falling off stuff. It'd be a Jack Black yeah. movie. It'd be yeah, be great. <laughs> I love it. He's just a scarier version of Jack Black. Yeah. There you go. And dumpier. Way dumpier. Yeah, he's <laughs> literally a sack of potatoes of a man. Ryan, do you think you could fall on a thing of thumbtacks if you had to? No. No, like, no, like no. Even if, like, I am not that guy. Even if your kids were cheering you on. Yeah, like, not even was, if it no. was like a million dollar match. It's the million dollar game. <laughs> yeah. Well, if there's a million dollars literally to be given to me to be thrown on some tax, yeah. yes. But these guys are brutal. I, that's just not my cup of tea. I admit, I'm not. I'm not that guy. Zip would do it for some giggles if he only had to do it once. If there was a crowd cheering me on, I would do it for free. <laughs> you're a, you're a better man than me. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'd take a two by four to the back. Oh my god, that sounds awful. <laughs> that's so thick. Man, that would really hurt. <laughs> I let someone hit me in the head with a cookie sheet as hard as they could, and yeah. that was way more painful. Than really? I yeah. I can remember Vince McMahon getting hit with a good bedpan. <laughs> I wanted that ding. I wanted the dun. He in literally it. talks about that. He's like, got to find the sweet spot on this bedpan. Well, speaking of uh, America versus Canada, isn't that kind of cool that your president was uh, on WWE for a while there? Oh, uh, excuse me. He is in the WWE Hall of Fame. If you, oh, you can go. respect him, please. <laughs> you see, because unlike uh, unlike our, na- our our little country up north, our little neighbor up north, you know, our leader wasn't a ski instructor before he got into politics. He was a hardcore no. businessman. <laughs> he was writing books. He was that's writing. right. That's right. He wrote those all on his own. He didn't have a ghostwriter or nothing. Nobody else. When you have like a family member, Ryan, who's going through a hard time and everybody's like, oh, you know, oh, uncle, whatever, you know, and then he shows up for some holiday and he's like got a – something's really wrong. You know what I'm saying? Where you're like, wow, he's really uh, – he's really – that one was close. Yeah, we we we, we, we record shake. next to an airport. And it, <laughs> I can feel the floor. It's a bad place. It's a bad one. place to record. Sometimes the airplanes come real low. What I'm getting I at is, it. how concerned were y'all when Trump won the election? Yeah. Were y'all kind of looking around like I think the U.S. is starting to lose its rocker a little bit. <laughs> it's funny when I I remember I followed politics pretty closely, and I remember uh, when the election day was happening. I believe it was November eighth, and I I remember sending a message to my brother who I do the show with saying this is going to be kind of a boring election. We know Hillary's just going to, you know, I'm almost embarrassed yeah. for Trump in some way. He's uh, just going to get creamed in, in the election. We all yeah, said of course, what everyone said. Yeah, but, <laughs> like, so this is where, you know, yeah, so I am I was, like, kind of, like, I wouldn't say happy about <laughs> Trump winning, but it, it was almost like, happy is not the right word, but it's almost like I can't believe this is happening. Oh, no. Where is this, where Shock is this going to take Shock is a correct us? term, yes. Absolute, yeah. like, manic. Like, <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. It's not something you should ever say after an election. That's I, was saying, <laughs> I was bug-eyed is a decent term. Yeah. But you guys are all happy now. He's doing a good job for you guys. You oh, guys we're are so happy. Yeah, we love him. Okay. Everybody is 100% good. Good. good guy. 100% good guy. <laughs> good. I'm glad. Well, he's the best. He's the healthiest president you've ever had. So you guys are it's, fine. I love that his doctor, that old. Do you remember the one with the yeah. they're trying to hair? say he's the healthiest president yeah. he's ever oh come God. in? Even though he literally just said he told me to write that afterwards, like a <laughs> no, week he later. Didn't. Hey, look at <laughs> yeah. God. Okay, so I'll tell you my least favorite Stallone movie. Okay. Yeah, please. And it's not Fist. It's uh, it's Dread. it's Judge Dread. Judge Dread, really? It's you a, don't even enjoy yeah. it for the the camp factor it's of it. It's a horrible movie. It is yeah. not a good movie. It's got Rob Schneider in it for some reason. He takes his helmet off for some reason. For the majority it's, of the film. Yeah, it's it's not a, a, it's not an honest de- depiction of the Judge Dredd character, no. but I think it's just an entertaining I don't. Movie. I think it's a yeah. bad story. Is Canadian porn really polite? Like, oh, I've always oh, wondered they that. Like, have to have a quota of Canadian-made pornography because the Canadian government has, like, quotas on Canadian-made entertainment. Huh. Yeah, I know, it was a problem. They didn't have enough Canadian-made pornography. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Look it up. It was hilarious. It was a lot. Sorry of, about that. They, you know, <laughs> ham that's called bacon off of each other. It was upsetting. So. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we don't call we don't call bacon Canadian bacon up here. That's just something you guys do. Yeah, you eat that pea meal bacon, don't you? No, we eat bacon. Yeah. Okay. We don't okay. have Canadian oh, bacon. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 oh,
with your health care no, no, and your better. bacon. We're, just more crack. Mm. we're not better. We're just crack. Yeah, maybe That's we all. should put the wall on that border. Bacon is the belly. You're eating weird bat. It's not bacon. You can't call it that and just say it is. Canadian bacon. Ah! <laughs> They call it back bacon or pea meal bacon or all sorts of sh- Back is my favorite. Fat back is awesome. <laughs> Nothing more appetizing than good old fat I promise you, we, we just call it bacon. We just call it bacon. <laughs> it's, it's, you're wrong. I can't <laughs> exclaim this enough. Uh, well, I, I can sense your I can sense your frustration, but I'm did sorry you have to a tell good, you. Did you have a good boxing day? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know why it's called boxing day, right? You're packing up all your sh- or yeah. I thought it was that you were giving stuff to your servants, right? Oh yeah, I've heard. Of that. That I don't know about that. My understanding was it's just yeah, you pack up with that which you don't use or want that you got for Christmas to save it for a rainy day or to give to somebody else. Give it to the poor. I literally thought it was like, all right, time to pack up the decorations and everything, and I was like, why are you celebrating that? That's the end of the holiday. Yeah, it's not really. It's basically it's kind of like our Black Friday. So wait, it's a major major uh, like that's what it is now. It's like a major. I'm sure you have the same thing, but we have what's called Boxing Day sales, which is everything's half yeah, off. Yeah, what have you. yeah, yeah. Um, so wait, do y'all open your gifts on Christmas Day or on Boxing Day? Absolutely, we're not, we're not, yeah, you know, we're not animals up here. I mean, you eat, you drink milk out of bags. So. Yeah. And no, you, no. You don't know how to identify people do, pork people products. People do, but we don't. We don't. No, it's, it's sure there's places that do, but it's not a thing. What, are you just lying to us now? <laughs> no, I'm not lying to you at all. Okay. Don't lie. All how right. dare you? Well, I think that's about it for uh, us with Ryan. I know that he drinks milk out of bags, so I think oh, we geez. can really While he watches Stallone films. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we had a good time with you, man. I'm really glad you came on the show. I know it's been an absolute blast and pleasure on my end. I, I, I appreciate it, guys. I really do. So, everybody out there, uh, let's just uh, repeat this. So, you need to go and check out. Plug yourself. <laughs> so, yes! I'm. Uh, nice! Yeah. You High like that? Me. You like that? Whoa! Uh, oh, you're I just want to Sorry. Before, before I plug myself, I just want to say uh, uh, I miss the old. The one thing I miss about the old recordings is when. Uh, uh, Bob was in the back. It almost sounded like he was in a different room, and it just it just made for more comedy because he's like yelling his yell and he's doing his laugh and just I don't know. That I always found his brother in the background, like make, making sounds and yelling. I like that. I'm gonna put that on a shirt for. We're gonna put that on the biography for you, Bob, on the website. Bob's like the younger brother of NRQ. Yeah. No, a lot of that was us. Either we were trying to figure out how all of this worked. So you know, your first commonplace thing with the microphone is, hey, loud ass. Just step. Yeah, we had to just calibrate step away from it for my screaming. <laughs> <laughs> and I and, and I say it with all due respect, and I and I love it. And nothing. Um, no. Canadian, Canadian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so again, I can be found on the Rocky Series podcast, Going the Distance, and also another podcast I do with my brother called The Worst of the Best Podcast. And uh, yeah, I think well, that one's pretty simple. To, it's a simple formula. We it's only like twenty minutes, a half hour each, so the it's easy to binge. And we basically just take uh, the best of like top 10 this top 10 that from music artists films actors and we choose what we think is the worst so we don't pick the best the public does we pick what is the worst for the best oh yeah so, so we have like topics that. ranging from tom cruise to metallica yeah. type things well okay. ryan we appreciate you coming on and we uh we hope to hear from you again okay thanks man thank you guys all right have a good one Woo-hoo! you too Oh, Bob, another episode in the bag. Yeah, baby. Is there anything else we need to do? I guess we got to give out those sweet, sweet plugs. So do we have a website, Bob? Yeah, it's at nrqpodcast.com. What about Facebook? Our Facebook page is No Redeeming Qualities Podcast. Do we have a Twitter? Yeah, baby. It's at nrq underscore podcast. If they wanted to help us financially... Do they have any options for that? Oh, baby. You can go to patreon.com slash NRQ podcast. Now, what if they wanted to maybe go to iTunes and uh, rate and review us? Oh, what kind of rating should they give us? Whatever you feel we deserve. Yeah, that's fair, right? That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Maybe Apollo Creed comes back from the dead and murders him with his fists for not throwing in the towel. Are we in a submarine right now? Is that on your end, Ryan? Sorry, I'm back. No, I'm back. Sorry. Let me just, uh, sorry about that. Let me just switch. He's I'm upstairs his... hiding from, I'm hiding from, I'm hiding from the kids. You're on that Canadian internet. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. It's probably much more reliable and friendly than ours. Yeah, .ca is the way to go.